right guys I'm back and we're going to be pulling our first card from the Divine Feminine Oracle I want to go back to a state of my being where I knew no pain. I want to go back to a state of my being where all I desired was pure love, honor, respect, adoration. and gifts of integrity. I want to go back to a state where I knew no hate. I knew of no evil. I come with gratitude in my heart space I come with pure untainted love emitting rays from my solar plexus the solar plexus the source the divine source of my inner chi. I'm grateful. I long to bring in healing that will radiate across the world such a phenomena of electrifying loving energy that heals you at the deepest darkest fearful places i call in the wisdom of the divine feminine I release all fear of the unknown and the unexpected. I'm so grateful to be a vessel of the Most High Sun. Hmm. I call in the elements of fire for love, compassion. Water for the soul's purification. Air for the flow of communication. And earth to ground me in the healing protection of my ancestors. My guardian angels. My cosmic elders. And the divine spirit that created us all. Praise be to the most high son. Praise be for the electrifying, loving, healing energy that you give to our, our, all solar plexuses that are open to receive a supernatural healing like none other experienced, not even from a pure loving connection between the feminine and the masculine that produces such a kundalini arising of just for like a force to be reckoned with I'm hearing I'm so 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 grateful for this beautiful 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 moment in time I am ready to receive what it is that you have for me and the collective. All right.
<laughs> you know what, guys? I'm here and we need to start realizing how much we choose not to breathe. This is what flipped over two cards. We need to realize, stop, and really take, a, take into account how we run around so emphatically and we really do not pay attention to our breathing. Makes sense why Ralph uh, Smart, I think that's his name, would always say on his video, you know, left side, something like that. Oh, that good ass prana. Okay. So the first card that came out is Our Lady of Guadalupe, the Empress of Protection. The Empress of Protection. And I'm hearing that song by Aretha Franklin, A Rose is Still a Rose. Baby girl, you're still a flower. Mm. That song is talking about like physical, emotional, mental, spiritual abuse and empowering women to let their spirit know that you are still a rose. And what I'm hearing spirit clearly say, the divine feminine clearly say that a rose has thorns for a reason. So there's a reason and a season to expand and extend your thorns, thorns to create that hedge of protection. Okay? I am safe and divinely protected. I am held in love at all times. Okay? Let's get into it, y'all. Our Lady of Guadalupe, the Empress of Protection. Mm-mm-mm. Mm -mm. Let's see. I don't think these are in any kind of order, child. So let me do the guidebook. I don't think they're in order. 30. Who is a lady of Guad Guadalupe? It says, Our Lady of Guadalupe is the em emblazoned emblem of the uniquely powerful protection of a mother's love. Her image is believed to that her image is believed to have miraculously appeared within the tilma or cloak of Saint Juan Diego. She appeared to him four times, the first of which was on December the 9th, 1531. She spoke to Juan in his native Nahuatl language and asked him to build a church in her honor. They were standing on the Tepayuc Hill outside Mexico City where the Spanish had recently destroyed a temple to the mother goddess Tonatzin, an Aztec goddess of love. Hmm. They were standing on the Tepayuc Hill outside Mexico City where the Spanish had recently destroyed a temple to the dedicated to Mother Goddess Tonatzin, an Aztec goddess of love. Juan Diego tried to convince the Archbishop of the authenticity of the apparition, but to no avail. He asked Guadalupe to give him a sign that would help convince the Archbishop of her identity. She appeared to Juan a final time and told him to collect the Castilian roses that are not native in Mexico that were in bloom at the top of the Tepayac Hill. He gathered the roses in his cloak, and when they fell before the archbishop, they both they could both see the emblem of Our Lady of Guadalupe inscribed on the inside of his cloak. Her image on Juan Diego's cloak has become Mexico's most popular religious and cultural symbol. It hangs above the high altar in the, Bas the Basilica of Guadalupe in Mexico City. The Basilica is the most visited Catholic.
uh is that pilgrimage did i switch did i switch too fast yes catholic pilgrimage site in the world and the world's third most visited sacred site its preservation and its mysterious creation have been a fascination for scholars and art historians for centuries it seems to be defying the laws of nature both by not decaying the way a natural substance should and by having been created in what seems to be one fell swoop rather than with multiple brush strokes. This now infamous image is worn as a symbol of protection from banners in the army during the Mexican War of Independence. And on the backs of migrant workers to shield them from being whipped to modern t-shirts and tattoos to protect the devout Catholics and gang members with the exceptional love of the divine feminine. Okay, so when your soul picks this card, it says what is outside of us is also within us. Even if we have never experienced a mother's love, the true force of that loving protection exists within us. So we can give it to ourselves. When Saint, when Saint Juan Diego was concerned that the archbishop would not believe him, and was racing to meet Our Lady of Guadalupe, she appeared suddenly and said the most beloved phrase in the apparition story, a phrase that is inscribed on the entrance to her basilica. And it says, No estoy yo aquí que so tu madre. I'll say that again. This is inscribed on the entrance to the basilica, and it says, No estoy yo aquí que so tu madre. Am I not here, I, who am your mother? Am I not here, I, who am your mother? The energy of a mother's love can travel to meet you anywhere, whether within the world or within your own heart. The message is that she is here. You are mothered, but the message is also to ask for what you need. Saint Juan Diego asked Our Lady of Guadalupe for a sign that proved her identity and existence. And she gave him her image emblazoned inside his cloak. One that has been venerated and considered holy ever since because he asked for her assistance. Do you hear that he asked for her assistance? This is the whole point that I'm making that they did everything to destroy the divine feminine. In, in religion, in, 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 in Christianity. That's the one I'm speaking of thus far because all the other ones I've tapped in always put the divine feminine on the pedestal that she so rightly deserves. Wow. So it says, we are ennobled with free will. The divine needs our request for assistance in order to enter our lives. All we need to do is to assume, is to assume the simplicity, the heart, and the humility of a child. All we need to do is to assume the simplicity and the heart and the humility of a child and ask for a sign that she is here. We will be met with more love than we could ever imagine. And love is always the greatest and most powerful energy of protection. So if love is the greatest, most powerful energy of protection and sex is the most greatest, most powerful energy of manifestation, then why is the world in such a disarray? Hmm, I wonder. Why is the world in such a disarray? Okay. And the next one that came out was we got we had a two-piece. Woo! Yes, I'm feeling it. So basically, our Lady of Guadalupe is what? The Empress, the highest card in the feminine archetype within the tarot. The Empress of Protection. And then we got.